trying to add sound to an animation. So of course first you have your animation created and test it out. Watch it, see uh, while you're watching it, think about what sounds would make sense to hear. In this case for demonstrating, I'm simply going to look for a heartbeat. You can create your sound effects. You can find them for free online. In this case, the website findsounds.com. You can use any of their sound effects with no cost. So this is the site I always recommend. It doesn't mean you can't do other Google searches. So if you go to findsounds.com, let's go to the home page. This is what you'll see. There's a field for entering descriptions to find sounds, or you can use the categories. I usually just type in what I'm looking for. It's not always really straightforward, but in this case, I'm just going to look for a heartbeat. Okay, now you'll get pages and pages of sound effects. You see here there's lots of pages to go through to listen to them. On my computer, when I click, it prompts me to open iTunes to hear. <laughs> On your computer, it might just open a screen and let you hear them right away. Let's see if we can prompt one to just... Okay, so you might see the screen in this way, but when you're ready to download a sound from this page where your sounds are, just right click on the link. Um, okay, right click on the link. Let me just show you. Cancel, right click, save link as. Okay, and you'll see it says .wav. That's the format we're looking for, either WAV file or .mp3. If you download other formats of sounds, you might need to uh, convert them iTunes does have a way to convert sounds, but it's easier if you find a WAV or an MP3 file. And then you just click Save. Now I have a lot of versions of the heart sound already saved, um, so I'm just going to replace that. Now, we want to add the sounds to your animation, but we don't want to add them directly to your stage. We want to put them in what's called your library. If something goes in the library, it can be used as many times as you want without increasing the file size. If you just imported right to your stage and you use that sound effect more than one time, it would just increase the size of your file. So it's not um, very efficient. So you want to use your library. If your library is not open, go to Window and to Library. So let's import, File, Import, and to Library. And mine are all in my downloads, and you can, I have a lot of sounds at this point, and some are duplicates. I'm going to click open. All my sounds are in here now. All right, so if I click on a sound, I'll see a little player in the top. I can just test that sound out. Okay, that's a duplicate. That's not going to work for what I want. So I downloaded a bunch just to have them. I'm going to use this heart sound. So you want to have a layer for every sound. You don't want to mix things up. Make things clean and easy for editing. So let's add a new layer. And I'm just going to call this a beat or heartbeat or whatever makes sense to you. You then have to decide where do you want that sound to start. I could have it starting right from the start. Uh, right from the beginning of the animation. Wherever in the timeline you want the sound to begin, make sure you place a keyframe or a blank keyframe. Okay, so if I wanted the sound to start on five, I'd put my playhead there, I have a keyframe there, and now I drag my sound to the stage. Now you don't see the sound here, but if I click up here, look at that. I do see the sound up here in my timeline. So you place a keyframe in the timeline, drag the sound to the stage, and then just click up here so you can see the sound waves. So let's test this animation. So you hear that pause or blank, and that's that first four frames or five frames where there's no sound. Now, if you want to edit the sound, make it shorter, um, click anywhere in the timeline, and now we need properties. So I have properties open here on the right. If you don't, go to Window and click on Properties. And while the sound 
uh, while the any frame is clicked on or selected in the timeline for the sound, we're going to come over here to frame and this speaker with the pencil, that's where you go to edit sound. It's a very basic tool. You have the ability to um, shorten the sound. So let's say we want to skip this flat part here in the beginning. I can simply click and drag. Now what was very um, almost unheard in the start is being cut off. You almost don't even know it. It's probably just a little pause. So you can start the sound a little bit uh, later. You can go to the end and end the sound a little earlier. There's a lot of flat lining there. We could bring it right in. Now, I'm going to click OK. Just notice up here in the timeline. Click OK. OK, it's shifted. That's because I cut some of that sound out. It's starting, uh, the sound waves are more noticeably larger now at the start, and we've cut a little of the end off. So again, click anywhere in there. You can keep going back and editing as much as you want. Um, now, I have this setting at frames. So all of these individual segments are frames. So if I know my animation ends on frame 20, And this sound effect lasts all the way through to about frame 75. I want to make this a nice clean end to my sound. I don't want it repeating. I don't want it overlapping as the animation restarts itself and loops. I don't want the sound effect piling up on itself. So to do that, you edit your sound to fit the actual animation. So I'm bringing this. Okay, I have it starting there. I'm going to bring it to 20. That's where my animation ends. And we'll bring it in just slightly more just so it's noticeable. Click OK. Click up here. And look at that. The sound effect is stopping at frame 19 now. So let's play. Noticeable pause. Okay. Now. I've made my anima uh, my sound effect uh, fit my animation. I could have as many uh, sound effects as I want. Let's make a new layer and let's um, let's have something right here at the start. So let's just listen to what else we have. Oh no. Mm -mm. Okay, let's do that. That's a terrible sound. Ooh. Okay, I'm going to drag it to the stage. Look at that. Now it's going to fill. So we're going to click anywhere up top, go to the editor, uh, make sure I'm set on frames. I'm going to bring that right in. That's just a blood-curdling sound. Now, if something is really long, you could zoom out on it so you can jump ahead uh, many frames and then zoom back in when we get closer to the beginning. Uh, I'm going to tr have it only go to frame 5. Let me zoom in more. So I know I want to go to frame 5. That way this first sound is right in the beginning. Then we get our heartbeat. Let's click OK. Click here. Look at that. Uh, I didn't shrink it far enough. It's going to have a slight overlap. Let's just test it. OK. So you can have, you can have as many as you want. Let's label this E. K G. 